today we're going to be wrapping up all of the books I read in the month of March. So let's begin with stats. I first of all read 13 books in March in which is equivalent to 4,893 pages. Using that up into format I had 5 digital, 4 audio and 4 via print and then splitting that up into rating 1 2.5 stars, 4 3 stars, 3 3.5 stars, 4 4 stars and 1 5 stars. So let's begin how I usually do in which is splitting that up into rating and going through them um, from the lowest rated to highest rated. So let's begin with my 2.5 stars. Last up is the ick factor in which this had themes of rom-com, fake engagement, workplace, always has been the one, teaming up for revenge against a common enemy and a friendship. I thought this one was a really interesting read. I found it to be quite cheesy and it was a bit annoying in parts but it was definitely just one in which you could get lost in and devour really really quickly so if you're just looking for something to break up the slump perhaps or just read a book really quickly get yourself out of your head into another world then I recommend this one for you if you also enjoy those themes. Then moving on to my three stars first of all we have La Fauna. This had themes of graphic violence death unconsensual sexual acts, magical realism, small town, it was disturbing and it was very weird literature. Um, I finished this one last night actually and I couldn't stop thinking about it basically all night. I have never really read anything like this. I read my year of rest and relaxation by Atasha Moshberg but this is my second book by her now I think and I just, it was so obscure and so weird and yet it just made sense almost and like I say it was set in this small town and it was to do with this boy but we had so many different narratives in there and it was kind of difficult to figure out whose narrative you were actually reading because it would just flick and change and there were just so many different characters but it didn't feel as though you didn't understand what was going on or who you were hearing um but the writing style was just mesmerizing and nothing like I've read before and I definitely recommend it for that alone however like I say I do caveat that it's very, very graphic, very violent, death focused and there is a lot of unconsensual sexual acts in there so please proceed with caution but if you feel like you can read it and are able to I highly recommend it as it's like nothing I have really experienced before in both writing style and in terms of the weirdness of the plot. We have A Restless Truth in which is book two to a marvelous light and sadly I didn't really enjoy this one as much as I did the first one. The first one I gave five stars but this one had themes of magic, self-discovery, mystery, a cruise setting, historical and lesbian romance. I found this writing to drag a lot more than in the previous book and I just didn't really click as well with the characters sadly. It felt very claustrophobic and I'm not quite sure if that was because of the cruise setting and I found in parts I was just waiting for the scenes to be over and yeah it, it, it just all kind of felt very predictable um, and sadly I just didn't really enjoy it that much and which was a, sh a great shame because I had high expectations to this but I still do recommend this series I think it is now I think there's about four books and I'm going to continue on reading it what I did enjoy about it is the fact that um, you didn't necessarily have to have experience of the first book because I am quite prone as per my sheet here to forget all of the themes and every single part that's included in the books. I remember the overall gist of them, but in terms of the intricacies, it's actually really hard to remember each and every theme that ever went on in a book, of course. So yeah, um, I just found that it was good in that sense that I didn't have to remember everything from the first book because it was following a different character, although it did weave into the wider plot um so yeah perhaps give it a go if those themes do sound interesting to you then next up we have the spare room in which i thought was such a joy i actually had fun while reading this and this had themes of flatmate slash forced proximity um cheesy rom-com messy and clumsy female main character in which i resonated with so much all of the clumsy acts in which the female main character did i have definitely done before and so i felt very seen and i love it when characters 
actors aren't fully flushed out and perfect and they have these flaws and they have these real life things that you've done before like dropping eggs on the floor and things like that because it just makes me resonate with them so much more. Um, finding yourself and confidence, breakups and hope and this one was just, it was a lot of fun. It was really easy to read again, definitely one just to get lost into, one in which it was just having a huge smile on my face and just kicking my feet um, and I just recommend it. It wasn't anything spectacular or amazing or that hasn't been done before but I just love these sorts of reads just to get a, like escape from the world and just kind of go into this fun, light, hopeful read um, in which does provide you with so much joy and hope. Then in my three stars next up we have Done and Dusted in which this had themes of a cowboy slash bowery race of romance, ADHD, anxiety, panic attack, grep, small town male main character and family dynamics now this is part the first book in a wider series i believe um and again i just thought it was fun i love reading these different romance and the different settings um it was very like cowboy focused and uh had horses in there as well in which i just love any books that incorporate animals and it just had the classic rom-com pining after one another steamy scenes and it was just a joy to read so if that does sound interesting to you then i recommend this one and if you enjoyed Heartless as well by Elsie Silver then I do recommend Done and Dusted because they just gave me similar themes and similar vibes. Moving on to my 3.5 star reads we first of all have Mr. Fixer Upper. This had themes of rom-com, co-workers, reality TV, building people that dream houses that deserve it. Um, it was sort of like these people were in horrible situations in their life and they would come to this reality TV show and these people would build them their dream house so there was like a little girl who had cancer with her mum and they were building this dream house for her and it felt really heart touching and like it made you pull into the story more because I was just these real people with real life circumstances woven into this book um, and it did feel somewhat real um, and then it also had uh, following dreams in here as well and the protective male main character and again it was just such a great romance read. I had fun with it. I thought it was just lovely. You knew where it was gonna go, so predictable, but just a different twist on all of these different romances. And I think that's all I can really say for these rom com -y romance books is the kind of overarching theme that they have is obviously what differs them out from the rest of the ways they'd all just be the same, but the generic template and structure that they follow are all very similar because of course it's a romance, so it can only sort of go one way. Um, um, but I feel like that's what makes them so joyous and perfect because you know what you're anticipating, what to expect going into this book. But that has that different theme in there as well. So it's not all two in the same. Um, so yeah, I do recommend that one if those themes sound interesting to you. Then my next 3.5 star read is The Sweetest Obsession in which had themes of small town, death of a loved one, murder mystery, friends to strangers to lovers, single dad and a protective male main character again. And yeah, like I say again, I am a really sucker for a small town romance because I just love delving into the setting and I can just really imagine it in my brain because they put so much information in there because they only have a certain area to work with so you feel as though you are in that situation rather than having like a whole landscape in which the author needs to try and give you lo loads of descriptors as to how everything's set out without being too info dumpy. Um, so I feel like Small Town works really really well because I'm not really one for liking info dumpy or liking a lot of descriptors about the area. Um, I'm much more of like a plot and I want to know what's happening. Um, so yeah, this one was great. I did really enjoy it. It had some really hard hitting themes in here as well. Felt very wholesome and very hopeful and I do recommend it. My last 3.5 star read is the Pumpkin Spice Cafe in which I've heard so many things about and it was a little bit disappointing because it did have like a theme of insta lovey and it was really hard to get behind but I feel like once I kind of try to see past that the other themes are great and those included a small town found family abandonment trauma past relationships impact of death figuring out yourself and it had autumnal vibes of course in which is my absolute favorite thing um 
yeah, it it was difficult because I was trying so hard to look past this insta lovey the whole time, but it was just in the back of your mind because you're like, I'm not that far in and they're already in love and it's just kind of you're waiting for it to happen but I tried to focus on the other elements of the book and I feel like that's what upped my enjoyment for it more and yeah again it was just so wholesome that small town atmosphere and that whole theme around finding yourself and that hopefulness that that carries with it. Moving on to my four star reads we first of all have Juniper and Thorn and which was the Bunnies book club pick for the month of February and March. I extended it because I was moving house in which my moving video and my sort of bookshelf setting organisation that I'm currently sat in front has gone live so you can go and watch that if you're interested to see how I set up my home library. Um, yeah, this one was a bit peculiar. I did quite enjoy it and it had themes of fairy tale storytelling, wizards and witches, star-crossed lovers, revenge, finding your voice and healing from trauma and I thought it was very weird in the writing style and the way that it was told. I didn't exactly connect with the characters and I got frustrated at the main character quite often um, but overall it was quite an interesting read and the fairy style element really made the themes feel more vulnerable and that was quite an interesting concept to read um, but if you have read it and you would like to know more in-depth thoughts I'll ha of course have my spoiler filled video linked somewhere so you can go and watch that um, but yeah overall it was very different to what I've read before but I did find the main character quite frustrating which was quite saddening um, and I was very confused as to the ending and a lot of the plot points I wasn't quite sure even when the book did end why a lot of those things happened rather than just because the plot went that way um so yeah it did leave me with a bit of a haze of confusion and the main character wasn't exactly my favorite but nevertheless it was still quite a good read and my next four star read was the tempest of tea in which was a highly anticipated book for me it was part of my 24 in 2024 and i sadly didn't enjoy it as much as i hoped that i would and it had themes of vampires found family hidden secrets strong main character hints of romance heist and a cliffhanger ending and like i said it was it was a bit of a letdown for me as it wasn't as spectacular as I had hoped and I did quite enjoy the characters that this involved and the little hints of romance and the heist but it kind of was a bit too focused around the heist for me personally. If Hanger Ending is something in which I would definitely want to continue on to the sequel of this book but it wasn't one in which I'll be anticipating. Um, so yeah a little bit of a letdown but it still was a good read. I was invested in it, I loved the characters um, but sadly just the plot didn't quite pull through for me. And we have Unraveling Him in which this had a lot of themes encapsulated into it. It had small town, toxic parents and childhood trauma, one bed forced proximity, family and belonging, over pranking history for male main character, trust, letting people in and the cutest dog. I loved how this dog was included in a lot of this and the scenes with the dog was one of my favourite favorite parts of the book. Um, but I thought this book did really really well in encapsulating so much. It also had a theme of road trip. Um, um, I feel like that kind of goes with forced proximity a little bit but I feel like this book was really well written and I really did connect with the characters and the scenery and I just really did fall in love with these characters and these themes and what they were going through it felt really real life and vulnerable and honest and raw I do recommend it if you're in the mood for any of those themes then my last and final four star read is House of Hollow in which had themes of mystery horror filled with flowers vines mold and fungi family sisterhood and death and this was such a peculiar read it was one of those things in which morbid curiosity and it felt so grotesque and disgusting but so woven in to these different elements and it was so mind-boggling and magical realism-esque and it just you were questioning your own sanity and the character's sanity and it was just so great to have all of these themes encapsulated in that to keep the plot running and I definitely recommend it. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil any of it because I still remember the ending even now and even now I would have never have guessed or seen it coming um so yeah I definitely highly recommend that one if you're in the mood for any of those themes. And the final book I have to share with you today and my five star read was Fear of the Flames. Now 
now. I read this just before moving house and it was the best escapist read. It was so good. I It was such a large book as well and I just got absolutely lost in it. This had themes of a strong main character, both the female and the male. Kingdoms, royalty, revenge, rivals, lovers, dragons, found family and betrayal. And I felt like at every turn this book was giving me something new, uh, whether it was character development or plot points or new themes encapsulated in it or just it constantly was playing with your mind and it was constantly developing and progressing and unraveling and I thought that was great at no point did I feel like this book was stagnant and I feel like that's what kept me so engrossed and encapsulated in this world and it did feel like the ultimate escapist read um and yes I highly highly recommend it if you haven't read it already um it was such a joy and so much fun those are all of the books in which I read in the month of March I would love to hear any books which you read or recommend and would love to hear if you have read any of these too and know your thoughts in the comments down below Thank you ever so much for watching this video and I hope that wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you have a wonderful day or night. Until next time, bye!